The urban scenes of Shoreditch may seem far from thoughts of a forest, but the East London Garden Society are proposing plans to make this area something of an oasis and are calling on the mayor to change current development plans to incorporate an alternative to a community park. A forest garden is itself a layered form of existence for, for plants where the tallest plants go to the top, the smallest plants go to the bottom and you can grow fruits and vegetables in a forest environment. It's the oldest form of agriculture in the world. The whole area would be growing where the, by the community could grow, uh, grow things and farm it, which has very little maintenance costs. Um, you think about forests, they combat air pollution, it combats climate change, etc. It's a cooler area for, for you to walk through in the midsummer when the heat is highest. There, there are forest gardens in Thailand, there's one in Seattle. There's a great movement in London for a, a greener London, as simple as that. We have the National Park, we have the Green Grid, etc. All these fit into that kind of iconic status for London. The society will see the disused railway in Shoreditch become a self-sustaining forest being linked to other green spaces by green corridors and bridges crossing two boroughs becoming Europe's largest urban garden. The forest garden green route could stretch from the city all the way down through Allen Gardens past Spitalfield City Farm into the parks of East London down here. It connects the north end of Bishop's Gate, the end of Old Street. It comes through the Bishop's Gate goods yard. It could come over a lightweight footbridge and connect into this area where we're standing now in Allen Gardens. So you could have a whole swathe of urban forestry and nature not taking up land that's going to be used for buildings, connecting right into the heart of the city. And I think that's really great and a real notable thing and a real boon that London could have. The developers, Ballymore and Hammerson, say that they've consulted with the public extensively and have updated their proposals. Now with plans for six acres assigned as public space, which includes connected gardens, terraces and walkways. But as ever, the planning decision will always lie in the hands of the Mayor of London when it comes to giving which green space the green light. At present, he will not comment.